Alrighty. Hello everybody, my name is Melik and welcome to a very interesting horror game that I found on Steam called Dagoon. I think that's the name of the game. So this game is made by HP Lovecraft and when I saw this horror game on Steam, it was playable, but there's also there's DLCs over there at the right side. So I thought, why don't I give this one, this horror game, give it a go? Because I think this might be a very interesting game. So Dagon is a faithful interactive adaption of H.P. Lovecraft's work focused on a story and atmosphere. You will not find difficult choices, action, sequence for inventory management here, and movement is limited to <coughs> persisting through locations along with the plot. Oh, okay, all I'm right. I'm writing this under an appreciable mental strain, since by tonight I shall be no more. Whoa! Uh, during the game, you will encounter interactive elements. Some of them will allow you to continue your journey. Others reveal interesting facts about the original short story, its historical background, and the author. Ha! Huh. Okay. Uh, some of the trivia is hidden. Oh, I have to find those. Okay. In order to find these secrets, focus your eyes and look for the Elder Sign. Okay. You can also access all the found facts later. They will be available in the main menu. Okay, good. So, can I move? How does it work? Hold on. Can I, uh, can I increase my sensitivity? Camera sensitivity. Okay, let's do a little bit like that. Text size. Now, I think text size is good. Okay. Can I move it now? Okay, now I can move a little bit good. Oh, what's this? Penniless, and at the end of my supply of the drug which alone makes life endurable. I can bear the torture no longer, and shall cast myself from this garret window into the squalid street below. Whoa. Do not think from my slavery to morphine that I am a weakling or a degenerate. When you have read these hastily scrawled pages, you may guess, though never fully realize, why it is that I must have forgetfulness or death. Death? Wait, what? Oh, what's this? Oh, I found one of them! A morphine! Morphine entered into use in this 19th century and, <coughs> and was widely administered to treat severe pain during the American Civil War. Oh! And World War One. Wait, is this best thought for a real story? It could be. 1940-1980. It was also sold without restriction, uh, restrictions until 1914. Morphine became more popular after the invention of the hypodermic syri uh, syringe around 1854. Frederick Sertner, Sertner? I don't know how to spell that, who first isolated this substance originally named Morphew after Morpheus, the Greek god associated with dreams. At the, <clears throat> at the same when Dogen was published, morphine abuse, known as soldier's disease, already posed a big problem in the United States. Wow. Interesting. Anything else around before I check? No, I think we're good. Okay, what's this? It was in one of the most open and least frequented parts of the broad Pacific Whoa. that the packet of which I was supercargo fell a victim to the German Sea Raider. Hmm. Whoa! Wait, hold on. Uh, well, I'm looking around here. Hang on. Wait. wait. Oh, I thought there was something over there. Ah, uh, any secrets? Hold on. I'm keeping my eyes open. Uh, nothing over there. Nothing over there. I can't turn in other direction. Why? This does this does no make any sense. Okay, I think there's nothing. Whoa! The Great War was like then at its very beginning and the ocean forces of the Hun had not completely sunk to their later degradation, so that our vessel was made a legitimate prize, whilst we of her crew were treated with all the fairness and consideration due us as naval prisoners. Hmm. <gasps> I found another one! The Huns! Okay. <clears throat> The Huns were Central Asian nom uh, nomads who established the Dominion in Europe and invaded it in the Roman empires in the 5th century AD. They were known as brutal, deadly warriors and masters of quick raids who also developed powerful compo uh, composite, composite 
Composite bows. I couldn't spell some of the words. Lazarus and early siege weapons. During World War One, the British used the World Hunt as a synonym for Germans in order to uh, emphasize their brutality. However, the term originated when the German Emperor Wilhelm II gave a speech uh, to this troops on 27th July 1900 before they <clears throat> embarked to China. Should you encounter the enemy, he will be defeated. No quarter will be given. Prisoners will not be taken. Whoever falls into your hands is forfeited. <clears throat> Just as a thousand years ago, the Huns under their uh, King Italia made a name for themselves. <clears throat> One that even today makes them seem mighty in history and legend. May the name German be affirmed by you in such a way in China that no Chinese will ever again dare to look cross-eyed at a German. The refusal to take prisoners was a, was a clear breach of the laws and customs of war adapted, adopted during the first uh, Hawk Conve uh, Convention of 1899. Wow. Interesting. What's this up there? So liberal indeed was the discipline of our captors that five days after we were taken, I managed to escape alone in a small boat with water and provisions for a good length of time. Oh, wait a minute. I think I understand. Uh, I think this is the. This must be one of the people who survived that war. I guess. I don't know. I think that might be what the story is. This is gonna really be quite interesting. Okay, uh, let's click on it. I didn't see anything else, so. I guess. I guess we'll keep going. When I finally found myself adrift and free. Oh, I, I got an achievement! I idea of my surroundings. Oh, Never a competent navigator, I could only guess vaguely by the sun and stars that I was somewhat south of the equator. Of the longitude, I knew nothing, and no island or coastline was in sight. Man, look at that view! How cool is that? Okay, uh, what now? Oh, I can click over there. Um, anything else I can click? I'm trying to be careful. I'm gonna keep my eyes open, by the way, to not miss anything. I don't think I don't see anything. I keep looking around. Uh, I think we're good. Okay, let's let's keep going, I guess. The weather kept fair, and for uncounted days I drifted aimlessly beneath the scorching sun, waiting either for some passing ship or to be cast on the shores of some habitable land. Okay. Oh! Okay, I got this. Is that no secret? Come on, there's gotta be, there's gotta be something. Man, whatever. But neither ship nor land appeared, and I began to despair in my solitude upon the heaving vastness of unbroken blue. Oh, I'm lame? The change happened whilst I slept. Whoa! Its details I shall never know, for my slumber Though troubled and dream infested, was continuous. Whoa! What the? What in the? Hello? What the? What do I do? What do I do? Uh, 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 uh. Where the fuck am I? I have no idea. Where am I? What is? What the when fuck at is last that thing? I awoke, it was to discover myself half sucked into a slimy expanse of hellish black mire which extended about me in monotonous undulations as far as I could see. What the heck? And in which my boat lay grounded some distance away. What the heck? Though one might well imagine that my first sensation would be of wonder at so prodigious and unexpected a transformation of scenery, I was in reality more horrified than astonished. For there was in the air and in the rotting soil a sinister quality which chilled me to the very core. The region was putrid with the carcasses of decaying fish and of other less describable things which I saw protruding from the nasty mud of the unending plain. 
Perhaps I should not hope to convey in mere words the unutterable hideousness that can dwell in absolute silence and barren immensity. There was nothing within hearing and nothing in sight save a vast reach of black slime. Yet the very completeness of the stillness and the homogeneity of the landscape oppressed me with a nauseating fear. The sun was blazing down from a sky which seemed to me almost black in its cloudless cruelty, as though reflecting the inky marsh beneath my feet. Okay, uh, anything I can do? Anything I can- Oh, over here! The origins of Dagon. Oh, that's what the thing is. Okay. Dagon seems to be inspired by Fish Head, a short novel by uh, Arvin, Irvin S. Cope about unnatural evidence between a hybrid idiot and the strange fish of an isolated lake. Supernatural horror and lit, uh, literature H.P. Lovecraft and Lovecraft's dream about a strange island emerging from the ocean and him crawling in the ooze that covered its surface. I dreamed a whole hideous crawl and can yet feel the ooze sucking me down. In defense of Dagon, H.P. Lovecraft. Lovecraft's interest in the topic steamed from his aversion uh, avers avers to fish and sea smells in his own words. Ugh. I hated it fish and feared the sea and everything connected with it since. I was two years old, but I can uh, not recall what earlier experience gave me such a profound and lasting Everson to the sea and seafood. The Dweller in Darkness, Lovecraft, 1927, Donald Wandre. What? I mean, it's interesting, but I gotta get out of here. This place is creepy. Ew! That was gross. As I crawled into Whoa, the, the stranded boat. I realized that only one theory could explain my position. Through some unprecedented volcanic upheaval, a portion of the ocean floor must have been thrown to the surface, exposing regions for which innumerable millions of years had lain hidden under unfathomable watery depths. So great was the extent of the new land which had risen beneath me that I could not detect the faintest noise of the surging ocean, straining my ears as I might nor were there any sea fowl to prey upon the dead things. Okay. Oh! Oh, I can... Uh, I can interact with this, but wait. Anything else? No. No, I'm trying to see another symbol around, but I don't see anything. Oh, well, whatever. For several hours, I sat thinking or brooding in the boat which lay upon its side and afforded a slight shade as the sun moved across the heavens. As the day progressed, the ground lost some of its stickiness and seemed likely to dry sufficiently for traveling purposes in a short time. Uh -oh. That night I slept but little, and the next day I made for myself a pack containing food and water, preparatory to an overland journey oh, in search of the vanished sea and possible rescue. Okay, okay, anything I can learn or any information I can get? No, okay, whatever. On the third morning, I found the soil dry enough to walk upon with ease. The odor of the fish was maddening, but I was too much concerned with graver things to mind so slight an evil and set out boldly for an unknown goal. Okay... Oh, I have to go over there? Wait, um... Anything? Where the fuck am I? This is like a really weird island. I really don't get it, but... Whatever. All day, I forged steadily westward, guided by a faraway hummock which rose higher than any other elevation on the rolling desert. Okay... Hold on, I'm trying to see anything, uh, readable. Like, I mean, uh, like, you know, uh, after the story. Uh, no, I didn't see anything. Where the fuck am I anyway? 
Well, I better keep move on. Ooh. Okay, uh, let me look around a little bit more. Uh, see anything? I'm trying to keep my eyes open as well. Uh, I didn't see anything. I guess. Gotta keep going? That night, I encamped, and on the following day, still traveled toward the hummock, though that object seemed scarcely nearer than when I had first espied it. What object? Um, whoa, 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 whoa! What's this? The horrors of the ocean? The creator of the. Uh, how do you spell it? Uh, Chituhi Mythos. And the fictional underwater city of. Uh, our Leif was convinced that life could not exist at the bottom of the ocean because the water pressure would make it uninhabitable. <coughs> Sorry. Today we know that the darkest depths of the ocean are home to many peculiar organisms. The deepest dwelling fish we have discovered uh, so far, the Mariana snailfish, Ooh. can live about 800 meters. Or 8,000 meters, uh, more than 26,000 feet. Wow. Below the ocean's surface and never-ending darkness and hellish uh, crushing pressures, hundreds of times stronger than those uh, found at the sea level. Upon glancing at the modern photos of deep-sea creatures such as the angel, angel or fish, uh, the fangtooth or the viperfish, and their truly love trap and uh, crafty and characteristics, it's hard not to find some irony in this. Wow! Very interesting, okay. This piqued my interest a little bit. Alright. Now what? Ooh. By the fourth evening, I attained the base of the mound, which turned out to be much higher than it had appeared from a distance. An intervening valley setting it out in sharper relief from the general surface. Okay. Too weary to ascend, I slept in the shadow of the hill. Shadow of the hill? I know not why my dreams were so wild that night, but ere the waning and fantastically gibbous moon had risen far above the eastern plain, I was awake in a cold perspiration determined to sleep no more. Such visions as I had experienced were too much for me to endure again, and in the glow of the moon I saw how unwise I had been to travel by day. Without the glare of the parching sun, Whoa. my journey would have cost me less energy. Indeed, I now felt quite able to perform the ascent which had deterred me at sunset. Picking up my pack, I started for the crest of the eminence. Okay, hold on a minute. I need to look around a bit. Uh, anything? I don't think so. Keep moving then. I have said that the unbroken monotony of the rolling plane was a source of vague horror to me. But I think my horror was greater when I gained the summit of the mound and looked down the other side into an immeasurable pit or canyon whose black Whoa. recesses the moon had not yet soared high enough to illumine. I felt myself on the edge of the world, peering over the rim into a fathomless chaos of eternal night. Through my terror ran curious reminiscences of Paradise Lost and of Satan's hideous climb through the unfashioned realms of darkness. As the moon climbed higher in the sky, I began to see that the slopes of the valley were not quite so perpendicular as I had imagined. Okay, um, nothing else I think? Ledges and outcroppings of rock afforded fairly easy footholds for a descent, Ooh. whilst after a drop of only a few Just hundred feet, there. the declivity became oh, very me. gradual. Okay, uh, anything? No, there's something down there. I can see it over there. Okay, climbing down. 
urged on by an impulse which I cannot definitely analyze. Whoa, I scrambled I can't with difficulty see down the rocks and stood on the gentler slope beneath, gazing into the Stygian deeps where no light had yet penetrated. All at once, my attention was captured by Whoa. a vast and singular object on the opposite slope, which rose steeply about a hundred yards ahead of me. An object that gleamed whitely in the newly bestowed rays of the ascending moon. Oh, that thing? Oh, what's uh, uh, wait, 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 anything else? So that thing? I'm going towards that thing? I don't know what's going on. That okay. it was merely a gigantic piece of stone, I soon assured myself. But I was conscious of a distinct impression that its contour and position were not altogether the work of nature. Ooh. A closer scrutiny filled me with sensations I cannot express. Okay, uh, whoa! Oh, I thought there's something there! Okay, never mind, uh, there's the moon! For despite its enormous magnitude, and its position in an abyss which had yawned at the bottom of the sea since the world was young. I perceived beyond a doubt that the strange object was a well-shaped monolith. Monolith? Whose massive bulk had known the workmanship and perhaps the worship of living and thinking creatures. Dazed and frightened, yet not without a certain thrill of the scientists or archaeologists' delight. I examined my surroundings more closely. Okay. Whoa! The moon, now near the zenith, shone weirdly and vividly above the towering steeps Whoa. that hemmed in the chasm, and revealed the fact that a far-flung body of water flowed at the bottom winding out of sight in both directions and almost lapping my feet as I stood on the slope. Across the chasm, the wavelets washed the base of the Cyclopean monolith, on whose surface I could now trace both inscriptions and crude sculptures. Okay... Dude, this is a really interesting story, but I can't really put the pieces together. The writing was in a system of hieroglyphics unknown to me and unlike anything I'd ever seen in books. Consisting for the most part of conventionalized aquatic symbols such as fishes, eels, octopi, crustaceans, mollusks, whales, and the like. Several characters obviously represented marine things which are unknown to the modern world but whose decomposing forms I had observed on the ocean-risen plain. It was the pictorial carving, however, that did most to hold me spellbound. Oh, okay. Storytelling methods. Dagon contains many themes and storytelling methods that Lovecraft developed in, this, in his later works, such as Telling the story through carvings at the mountains of madness, the nameless city, journals and characters' notes, the shadow of the shadow out of time, the hunter of the dark, islands emerging from the ocean, the call of Chu um Chitulu I don't know how to spell that. Or fictional beings and deities based on real events and myth mythologies. Ooh, Migo. Uh, in the whispers, in the it whispers, and whisperer in darkness, dude. I never heard of that mythology before. Honestly, I really want to learn more about it. It's also considered the origin of the popular Chitulu methods, or myth methods. Oh, I gotta hear that. Some of Lovecraft's other stories also conclude in a manner similar to Dagon. But let's skip the details in order not to spoil the ending. Oh, I gotta get to the ending! Oh, this might be a long story. Plainly visible across the intervening water, on account of their enormous size, were an array oh, of masters whose subjects would have excited the envy of a Dore. I think that these things were supposed to depict men, at least a certain sort of men. 
though the creatures were shown disporting like fishes in the waters of some marine grotto, or paying homage at some monolithic shrine which appeared to be under the waves as well. Of their faces and forms I dare not speak in detail, for the mere remembrance makes me grow faint, grotesque beyond the imagination of a Poe or a Bulwa. What the? They were damnably human in general outline, despite webbed hands and feet, shockingly wide and flabby lips, Ew. glassy, bulging eyes, and other features less pleasant to recall. Curiously enough, they seemed to have been chiseled badly out of proportion with their scenic background. For one of the creatures was shown in the act of killing a whale, represented as but little larger than himself. I remarked, as I say, their grotesqueness and strange size, but in a moment decided that they were merely the imaginary gods of some primitive fishing or seafaring tribe. Some tribe whose last descendant had perished eras before the first ancestor of the Piltdown or Neanderthal man was born. Is this based on the Greek mythology? I don't know. Awestruck at this unexpected glimpse into a past beyond the conception of the most daring anthropologist, I stood musing whilst the moon cast queer reflections on the silent channel before me. Then, suddenly, I saw it. So what? With only a slight churning to mark its rise uh, to the uh, surface, uh, uh. the thing slid into view above the dark waters. What the? like a stupendous monster of nightmares to the monolith, about which it flung its gigantic spirals. It bowed its hideous head and gave vent to certain measured sounds. Uh, what do I do? What do I do? What? 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 what, what, what? Mad then. Of my frantic ascent of the slope and cliff. Of my delirious journey back to the stranded boat, I remember little. Whoa! Uh, what? What? Where? What? Where am I? Where am I? Dude, I don't know. What the fuck? Dude! I believe I sang a great deal and laughed oddly when I was unable to sing. What? Do not just go! Jeez! That scared the living shit out of me, dude! I have indistinct recollections of a great storm sometime after I reached the boat. At any rate, I know that I heard bells of thunder and other tones which nature mutters only in her wildest moods. What the heck? When I came out of the shadows, what? I was in the San Francisco hospital. Brought thither by the captain of the oh, American ship, human. which had picked up my boat in mid-ocean. In my delirium, I had said much, but found that my words had been given scant attention. Of any land upheaval in the Pacific, my rescuers knew nothing. Nor did I deem it necessary to insist upon a thing which I knew they could not believe. Well, maybe you should have brought something. The journalist! Lovecraft was a, a prominent figure in the world of amateur journalism in 1915. He started publishing his own journal called The Conservative, Conservative which included political and social commentary, poetry, short stories, and literary criticism written by him and other authors. Howard was a skilled wordsmith, but he also took criticism to heart, which resulted in his decision to step away from writing po uh, poetry and concentrate on weird fiction again. For the first time since his teenage years, Dagon published in 1917, is one of the short stories written during that period. In this example, except from the conservative, the master of horror fiction explains his attitude towards w warfare and the idea of world peace. 
Why any sane human being can believe in the possibility of universal peace is more than the conservative can fathom. Should the entire civili uh, civilized world agree simu uh, simultaneously to desire, uh, uh, how do you spell that? Disarm? One or more nations would undoubtedly retain uh, secret armaments, uh, armaments, armaments, and at the proper time take advantage of their more altruistic and less as, uh, astute contem uh, contemporaries in a wild career of conquest against un uh, unarmed victims. No country is or even can be above warfare until the basic impulses of the human animal shall have miraculously changed. Dude, what the fuck? I'm confused. I don't know what this is supposed to mean. Okay, can I get up? Oh! Doors open! Once I sought out a celebrated ethnologist and amused him with peculiar questions regarding the ancient Philistine legend of Dagon, the fish god. Th that was a fish god? I never heard such a thing like this before. Wow. Dagon. Okay. Dagon. Oh, it's Dagon. Okay. Well, the main deity of the Philistine Philistines worshipped throughout the Middle East as the ancient god of fertility and crops. In uh, in Hebrew, the word Dagon was common noun for grain. The rulers of Akkad, Mesopotamia, chose him, chose him as the patron saint of their war conquest. He also appeared as a judge of the dead in an Adrian poem and an underworld prison wa uh, warder in one of the Babylonian texts. He is often mistakenly taken for a fish god due to the wrong uh, interpretation of his name. As in Hebrew, uh, Her uh, Hebrew the word dag means fish. In H. P. Lovecraft's works, Dagon is an underwater deity ruling over the deep ones, a humanoid race with fish traits that resides in the oceans. He is worshipped by a secret cult called the uh, Esoteric Order of Dagon, or da Dagon. Dude, what the heck? This is a weird legend. I, I didn't know what to say, honestly. But holy cow, this looks cool. I love this game already. Oh, I'm up. But soon perceiving that he was hopelessly conventional, I did not press my inquiries. Okay. Um, uh, I'm just gonna look around a bit. Uh, oh! August Derelith, the, the, the Chotholo Methods? Oh, it's might be the mythology of this. Okay, let's read. August Derelith was an American writer and Anthologist. He also befriended Love, uh, Lovecraft and published many of his works through his company, Arkham House. Although the gr uh, greatly contributed to the popularis popularis uh, popularis uh, wait hold on popularization of the author's work. After his death, he's surrounded by numerous controversies. One of his co one of one of his most questionable decisions involved. Uh, introducing the good is the good versus evil, doct uh, evil doctrine. Derelith was a devout Catholic, Catholic, to the uh, how do you read this? Chitula which it which con uh, contrasted with Lovecraft's view of the world and his approach to cosmic horror. As a result, the author author's works are often misunderstood and. Misrepresented uh, in today's culture. It is also worth uh, noting that Lovecraft was never really in interested in creating a mythology, and the term Chutuhulu Mythos was co uh, coined by Duralef after the author left the mortal plane. What? I didn't quite get it. 
Oh, interesting. Okay. Wait, what now? Oh, I have to go over there? Wait, hold on. Is there anything else? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. What's over that side? Is that a clock or something? Okay, what do we got here? Uh, let's see. There's a statue. Don't know who that is, though. Uh, let's see. Uh, where do I go now? Oh, over there. Okay, got it. Uh, wait, anything else? Why did I come here anyway? I don't know. Uh, whatever. Alright, I'm out of here. I guess. Whoa! It is at night. Especially yeah. when the moon is gibbous and waning, that I see the thing. That's I tried that. morphine, but the drug has given only transient surcease and has drawn me into its clutches as a hopeless slave. So now I am to end it all, having written a full account for the information or the contemptuous amusement of my fellow men. Oh no. Lovecraft on tobacco and alcohol. Lovecraft hated toba to uh, tobacco, even though he used to smoke when he was 12, in order to look and feel like an adult. In his correspondence with friend, uh, Renard Kleiner, he claims that he quit as soon as he started wearing long pants. He also had a very strong opinion about alcohol. Uh, as evidenced by his letter to Zelai Brown, dated 13 February 1928. What? Is this based on a real event? I'm so confused. As for the matter of drinking, I have never tasted uh, into, into intoxicating li uh, liquor, never intend to, having a strong as uh, aesthetic disgust at anything which blunts or cor uh, corsets, corsets the delicate natural equi equipos of the evolved human intelligence and imagination. Drinking excited my personal repu uh, repugnance, hence I don't drink. Let the heart, let the herd do what they will. I'm rather in favor of prohibits, prohibits, or her frobo Prohibition? The, fro the prohibition of any one anti-social force as well as of any other. Source. The spirit of revision, Lovecraft's letter to Zillia Brown read, uh, read Bishop, H.P. Lovecraft, Sean Barney, Andrew Lemon, S.T. Joshi. Okay. Do I have to do this? What is it going to do, though? Often. I ask myself if it could not all have been a pure phantasm. Oh no. A mere freak of fever Whoa. as I lay sunstricken and raving in the open boat after my escape from the German man of war. This I ask myself, but ever does there come before me a hideously vivid vision in reply. I cannot think of the deep sea without shuddering at the nameless things that may at this very moment be crawling and floundering on its slimy bed, worshipping their ancient stone idols, carving their own detestable likenesses on submarine obelisks no of water-soaked granite. I dream of a day when they may rise above the billows to drag down into their reeking talons the remnants of puny, war-exhausted mankind. Of a day when the land shall sink and the dark ocean shall ascend amidst universal pandemonium. What? Oh, I'm at New York? No way! What the fuck? Yo! What is, uh, uh, oh, wait, the end is near. What the? I hear a noise at the door. As of some immense slippery body lumbering against it. Uh, 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 do I dare? Do I want to go check it out? It shall not find me. Come 
God, that hand. What? The window, the window. Uh, what do I do? Oh, over there. Go, 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 go. Pick up a friend. Motherfucker, that's it? Oh no! We hope you enjoy amusing yourself in our little pool of cosmic horror. We would appreciate if you took a moment to raid Dagon and check out our other games and DLCs. Dude, I will definitely do that, but oh my god! Holy crap, that was cool! So we got these two DLCs. The one is called Edric the Eldritch Box, and the other one is called The Little Glass Bottle. Yo, I don't know what to say! That was nuts! I really enjoyed the game, honestly. This was such a great story. But I maybe in the future I will do the other two games. So anyway, wow! That was a great game, honestly that was really good. Oh, and I also there was another game called Tales of Herring Lake. I don't know, I don't know much about that game, but I might also look it up. So, oh, I can follow on Twitter. I have a Facebook and I, I can follow on Twitter. Yeah, I'll definitely do these later. So, holy shit, that was a great game. I, I really enjoyed it. And it was on Steam as well. And I think I got all the achievements I need. So, that's it for um, Dagoon. Um, I really enjoyed the game. Maybe in the future I will do the other three or other two games made by the same person, made by the same developer who did. So,. That's it up for Naples. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. And if you did, be sure to drop a like, of course. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you guys are new to me. And I will see you dudes in the next video.